Okay, we are here after the major series across draft. Uh, I'm Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire and Jake Elliott, and uh, we're pleased to be chatting about what went on. We're going to talk a little bit about what we saw, what we think in terms of strong or weak drafts, about uh, surprises. And Pat Gregoire, you uh, you follow this pretty closely. And uh, did anything jump out at you as as you're sitting there watching, listening to the draft? Was there anything where you said, "Wow"? It wasn't necessarily a surprise, but I did say, wow, just how often and early we saw so many Orangeville Northmen go off the board. I think we can maybe start thinking about renaming Brooklyn as Orangeville East, perhaps, because they just <laughs> continue to pick more and more Orangeville guys uh, and starting things off with Kyle Waters. He's a special player, um, a big body that can score big goals. Uh, he obviously showed what he can do on that playoff run to the Minto Cup. Um, and then just a few picks later with Zach Deacon, a very special player, um, you know, not the biggest defender, but uh, he makes up for it in his athleticism, um, his lacrosse IQ. So I thought, you know, Brooklyn did a great job addressing some needs there. And, you know, a few picks later, they go and grab Dustin Pratt, another solid defender as well. So I thought, I thought Brooklyn, obviously with the, the abundance of picks that they did, I like that they addressed some needs, but they also went for guys that have a winning experience. And that's what, mm -hmm. You know, Brad MacArthur is trying to do with this Brooklyn lacrosse club. He wants them to become a champion. So why not grab players that have won championships? Yeah, we, yeah. we see that here in, in, in the West too, Stephen. Um, you know, Coquitlam with, with all their mental cup appearances, they're always littered throughout the, the Western draft with top picks. But uh, if I may say, like, if I'm a GM in the MSL and, and I have – like, I'm just picking the Orangeville captain – no matter, like, I don't, no disrespect to Kyle. I'm just taking Orangeville's captain. That's my strategy going into the draft because those guys usually pan out pretty good. Yeah, that's not a bad strategy. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, strengths in the draft. Obviously, Brooklyn, with the three first-rounders and, and the first pick in the second round, added a lot of talent. Um, I'm going to start out with, actually, Coburg, I thought – to me, as I go down, I thought it had a, a good value draft. I mean, obviously with the second and third picks, you expect to get someone. Uh, it's pretty good. They got Matthew Sykes, who played with San Diego and has shown how uh, solid and strong he is. Alex Simmons, one of the most talented players in this draft. I mean, guy scores 6.3 points a game as a 19-year-old in, uh, in junior A with St. Catharines. He's super talented, not as big as Waters, but very talented. Um, and then they didn't have a, a pick in the second round, but they get into the third and they get a couple of guys in uh, Curtis Conley and Curtis Romanchuk. Both play at Trent, so they're both very close to Coburg. Um, pretty local guys and guys who are gritty, who have shown that they're good, solid, reliable players. A uh, little bit of transition, pretty much D-first guys. And and uh, I just thought it was a pretty nice draft for Coburg, given the, the picks that they had. Um, and then you had Keelan Pilon in the in the fifth round is I think another really good value pick. That's a high scoring young uh, young lacrosse player who uh, you know you're he's sitting there in fifth because teams are going for need. Teams are looking at geography, whatever. You know there's some very good players being picked, but I was a little surprised he fell, and I thought good for them. Um, Jumbo, I want to uh, turn to you for a sec because I know. Uh, we talk, you obviously caught, saw Kyle Waters. You also got to see quite a bit of Cameron Dunkerley. Speaking of value picks, a fifth rounder. He's a guy who yeah. said Catherine's pick. So you've seen him in, in the Minto in, and in Victoria. And you've seen him with Saskatchewan as a practice player. He brings a lot to the table. He sure does. Uh, smaller goaltender, but we've seen those guys be pretty successful uh, with, with goaltenders before. A uh, guy by the name of Del Bianco comes to mind, kind of similar frame. And listen, man, like you're right. Like I've watched him kind of grow up and I thought, well, how is he going to be in the National Lacrosse League when he when he puts a, a plastic stick between his legs and a bigger net? And not that I'm uh, the end all be all as far as snipers go, but I watch guys like Mark Matthews and Robert Church uh, fire away on him in practice. And he is not easy to score on. And I would only expect him to mature physically as he gets older as well. And as we know, goaltenders take a little bit longer to develop into those bona fide number one guys. And I think Dunkley is going to have the runway to do that, which is nice, but to get him at the fifth round, this is a guy on a national lacrosse league roster uh, to fifth round pick. Like, I don't know if you're going to do any better than that. So, so well done uh, picking up Dunkley and a great kid to go along with it. Right. Perfect mentality for a goaltender. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, Cameron Dunkerley, I had the uh, opportunity. He was actually a, an intern for Kuflo, where I'm the communications coordinator. And we drove in his pickup truck because he has a uh, like a junk removal business. And we met in Coburg and drove from there to Montreal for the uh, Begadaway Cup a couple of years ago. And he's a great kid. He is just, he's a very mature guy. While he was in Victoria playing for the Shamrocks, he was running his business remotely using a bunch of his teammates to work for it like he, he's a mature kid he's a smart kid and yeah. he's he's a very good goaltender yeah i know he, he sure is like i said he's not an easy go like I, I fired some shots but i couldn't get one by him and, and i've seen the pros uh rip and and, and listen I'll, I'll say this uh you're, you're not gonna get much better of an endorsement coming from Derek keenan and he's really high on cam dunker mm -hmm. he really is pat um i know you had a surprise and you actually helped me out with this a bit because I, I had a big miss on my uh, draft preview, I thought, because uh, um, – because yeah, How was the mock, Stephen? Uh, I didn't even get to see your MSL world-famous mock draft here. How did you do? <laughs> um, I did okay. I got the top uh, the top handful. Were, were, I had the first round pretty good. It gets hard after that. There's a lot of variation. Well, especially with no lacrosse, right? Like it's yeah. almost like throwing darts, but uh, yeah. I know you're – guru when it comes to that so i wanted to <laughs> yeah. the, the one that i missed uh pat that you want to talk about is nungo thompson and his his name was listed with his full name in the uh, draft list and nungo is actually the last half or so of his name so i missed it and you you gave me the heads up and i was able to edit that i don't know if you know i saw but i edited it and said i missed this one guys <laughs> don't forget nungo thompson but he went to the fourth round yeah, don't feel bad because I think maybe some of these GMs might have missed out on him too, dropping all the way to the fourth round. I think this is the no doubt undisputed steal of the draft. This guy could probably be the best defender in this draft, not just in the future, but right now. He has a full year of National Lacrosse League experience under his belt playing with the Halifax Thunderbirds. He isn't, you know, as renowned for, for this long because he did play his junior lacrosse in Aquasasne. So uh, he's maybe not the big names like the Zach Deacon or anything like that. But what I saw out of him uh, in Halifax, night in, night out, uh, this guy's roof or his ceiling is through the roof. Um, he, he's a big, strong body. He's very tough, hard nose. Um, he needs to work on his stick skills and he knows that, but he continues to get better and better, um, getting better in transition. I think, you know, getting him at the, in the fourth round, I mentioned already, it's the steal of the draft. Um, but just the fact that, uh, you know, Six Nations now adds another uh, great, talented defender who is athletic, um, that's not afraid to mix things up. Uh, uh, just uh, a really, really great pick by Dewey Jacobs here. One of the things, Pat, that you, and you saw him obviously in Halifax all the time, and I've got to, I've gotten to see him in a bunch of tournaments and different games. And what I've always seen with him is he's a little raw. He, he makes some mistakes. But he really seems to learn from the mistakes, which suggests coachability and the cross IQ. And like you said, he may be the best defender in the draft now. I, maybe, maybe not. I, I think he, he seems to have such an upside such a, and such a continuous learning curve that he's making. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, talking to his coaches in Halifax, that's exactly what they say. Um, he's just so coachable. He's always trying to learn. And uh, you're exactly right. You you know, once a game, he's going to make a mistake, um, but he will never make that mistake again in that game. Um, sometimes he overcommits a little bit too much, but now he's learning really how to play, you know, that pro style game. And that's going to translate perfectly to major series lacrosse. I cannot wait to see him in the ILA with that defense. He's going to fit in perfectly with I the Chiefs. I think. Hey, yeah, nice spot for him to, to land, right? He'll get insulated in that Chiefs organization, surrounded by fantastic defensive players that he can learn from. And he's not going to get rushed along and pushed into that lineup too quickly where it's a little too much for him. So I think it's the perfect spot for Thompson to go. Yeah, somebody similar to somebody like an Oliver Bolsterly or, um, you know, Kellen, uh, Liam LeClaire, some of the young defenders who have gone to Six Nations and had that opportunity, like you said, Jumbo, to, to kind of ease their way in, not having heavy responsibilities right away, uh, but being given the opportunity to show what they can do, which is, which is huge. Yeah, speaking of steal of the draft, I have to say, uh, Pat, I don't know uh, if that's like salmon or like Baja Rose or what you got, but that shirt uh, you're rocking, that, that might be the steal of the draft right there. 
Funny enough, it was actually on the clearance rack at the end of the golf season last year. So yeah. you are right. It was a steal. I have no idea why <laughs> that shirt would be on the clearance rack. I, I well done. Nice pickup. I don't know what to say now that we've rolled into the fashion <laughs> side of the draft, but uh, Jumbo, I know we, uh, Daryl, um, Daryl Smart, who uh, is, is running things for us here and that he really wanted me to ask you about similarities you see, cause you watch, you do watch a lot of MSL lacrosse in, in addition to all your duties with the, the Western clubs and, and league leagues. Sure. And uh, what uh, do you see similarities, any team that kind of makes you think, Hey, this team reminds me of this team and what they're doing and the way they're, they're rising or hanging on and what they're doing. Yeah. I, I think there's some similarities between Brooklyn and Coquitlam right now. Um, Coquitlam really is, is, I get, I think they're going to take a lot of people by surprise. I know when we were talking NLL bubble and that happening, I was thinking Coquitlam is going to run away with the WLA if those leagues go at the same time, because they are littered with players that are ready to take that next step, but not full of NLL guys on their roster. So I think uh, I think they they they're they're going places, and as I do with Brooklyn, that young squad, and they're going to learn and grow together, and really they're gonna they're gonna work so hard that they're gonna push those Peterboroughs and Six Nations teams just off their work ethic and their and their youth and and all that sort of stuff. So I would kind of put Brooklyn and Coquitlam together. I don't think a lot of t uh, people are talking about the team that Langley is going to actually put on the floor come summertime here. And, and I'm not, I don't know if I'm quite ready to put them up with, with Peterborough and six nations here, but you think about some of the moves that that team has made and really what the Thunder were, were always kind of short of is a goaltender. And now they got Frank Shiliano, who is, who is, you know, highly regarded as the best Western goaltender over the past four or five years, especially when you put that wood stick between big Frankie's legs Throw in Superman into the mix. Connor Robinson, Tyler Pace coming back into that lineup. That decor getting a, a year older together. I think a lot of people are sleeping on Langley. I'm telling you right now, don't do that. So I don't know who to compare them to out there in that regard, but uh, they're going to be a fun team to watch. Yeah, I mean, another young team. We I, I talked about Coburg a little, a team that came out of the gates on, on fire Uh 2019 and then kind of struggled down the stretch but another team that's been coming up trying to get into that next level um oh and sound it'll be very interesting to see what what they do but pat i know you wanted to talk a bit about uh, about oakville and uh you there's know, a, a kind of a quiet draft jake yeah. langley oakville i think you just answered my, your own question there i think that's a great selection and, mm -hmm. and comparison for those two franchises and Pat, to me, the guy that jumps out, there's two guys to me that jump out for Oakville and you can, uh, you're going to talk a bunch more about this, but Mike McCannell was, uh, I think, an under the radar pick that not everyone thought was going to go that high, but people really like him. Maybe, you know, one of the best transition guys in this draft up there with Jake Stevens that Brooklyn got and also getting Hunter Lemieux, another very good Brook, uh, Burlington guy in the fifth round. So what do you think of what Oakland's done, Oakville has done? I think once again, they've quietly uh, done a great job um, going quiet about their drafts. It seems that every year they kind of go under the radar with these great picks uh, and they've done a great job over the years. They have their, you know, their NLL stars, but they pick up these other guys that maybe play a couple of years with the Oakville Titans, uh, that great senior B program. And then when they're ready to play, they burst onto the scene. Um, so I think a couple of these guys could be one of those players. Like you said, Mike McCannell, I think he's a very good under radar pick. Um, uh, going, I th he was in the first round, fourth overall. Uh, Cameron Wires is a guy that I'm really excited to see um, in, in the next level. Um, I got a little bit to see with him playing with the beaches. Uh, you know, he's a big body defender, uh, but he can pick off passes and really uh, disrupt things with his stick. Uh, he moves the ball up the floor so uh, effortlessly. And as you know, with the Oakville Rock, especially playing at the Track. When you have guys that can run the floor, uh, that's just perfect. They really, really dominate in transition, uh, especially in that second period with the door placement that works in their favor um, with the righties coming off the floor. Uh, and Matt Anderson, you want to talk about a guy that can run the floor. He's a guy that can play defense. He can play offense. Uh, a la Brandon Slade, who's a, a guy that's found a lot of, uh, of, of good uh, success with that uh, Oakville team. Um, I, I just think this is another great, great draft by the Oakville Rock, and they continue not just to have uh, a strong core, as I mentioned, you know, with their their young team that are, have budding NLL stars. 
but they've done a great job, as I mentioned, with that Oakville Titans team, grooming those players so they're ready when they get to the next level. And may I just say that I think the addition, I know it's been a couple of years now, of, of Steve Dietrich Chugger coming onto that Oakville franchise and helping Jamie Dowick out with like you're talking about a guy that that has been around this game his entire life pro level uh summer level so he's seen it all he knows the ins and outs he was formerly with Coburg as well right so he, he knows that for I think the addition of Steve Dietrich to Oakville has been huge for that franchise and and uh, be confident that this guy knows what he's doing when he, he's making those selections I think one thing, Pat, that you touched on is uh, the the Titans as a senior B team, the Brooklyn Merchants, very similar. There's some, some of these teams have very strong connections with their senior B clubs. And um, a lot of these kids are probably going to wind up playing some senior B lacrosse, which is a very high level of, of lacrosse. I mean, I've had the chance to go and do some President's Cups. I know we've all watched uh, senior B play and there's some very good quality lacrosse. And I think that's going to be very important for, for teams, especially because we talked earlier, there's not much of a preseason if we get this season. We're all hoping July 5th we go. There's not going to be a lot of time before that to prepare these teams. And you've got two years worth of draft picks that have never come and been with your team. I think having a chance to develop players in senior B is going to be huge. I also think the, the other question I want to ask in that kind of vein for both of you is how do you see teams preparing for this season when we haven't, we haven't seen people play guys haven't been playing. You don't know exactly what kind of shape everyone will be in. Who's healthy. Who's, who's, fit who's ready to roll what other issues people have i mean there's so much unknown how do you prepare for a season like we're hoping to have this year i think this is maybe the one time where you'll see a lot more young guys maybe make the roster right away um, you have guys coming directly from the ncaa um, just finishing up their seasons ready to go they're they, they are literally they're they're still playing the stick's still in their hand they're still conditioned and not to say that you know these other players aren't in the the weight rooms right now or running or getting ready playing wall ball just the thing is you can't replicate is game speed and, and, you know, being game ready. So I think for once that maybe some of these rookies or the early picks are going to have a little bit of a, of a leg up on some of the veterans. Um, but with that being said, that's only going to elevate the veterans to make sure when they get ready, they're going to hit the ground running as well. So I think it's going to be an interesting dynamic, but Steven, you do bring up a good point. I think senior B it's going to be even more important because if guys aren't ready to go or guys, you know get hurt because they haven't played in so long those guys that are waiting down in senior b they're gonna have to be ready to go because their name might get called and yeah Jake, it's a similar dynamic right wla start playing to start a bit earlier but both leagues trying to prepare for this season yeah it, it's it's really gonna be interesting to kind of see how it plays out and, and i and i look at it like this way Stephen, that you know the veteran guys that have been around a long time know how to take care of themselves and keep themselves ready to play it. And they may need to ease into it a little bit slower than, than the younger guys, but they know the steps to take and what it's going to, what it's going to take to, to be ready to play when it's time to go. And for the young guys, I think they're going to be so hungry and motivated that they're going to be working their tails off to, to be as ready as they can as well. Weather out here is starting to get a little nicer. So outdoor boxes are, are opening up and, you know, you can find a little floor time uh, here and here and there around uh, these parts right now, which is a little bit different situation than it is in Ontario, which, which is really nice, but it's, I, I think at the end of the day here, guys, it's going to be the same for everybody. And you're just going to have to be ready to go and hit the ground running when, when that green light goes on, because uh, that's, that's what it's going to be. So, and let's not also forget here, especially in Ontario, you guys got like a bunch of free agents. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's happening with, protections and all that sort of stuff but it, it looks like not only we're we going to have the vets and, and the established guys and the draft picks come but then you're going to have a bunch of free agent guys looking for teams to go to and, and maybe try out or, or sign uh wherever they choose which is really going to make for an interesting kind of couple of months here as we lead up to july yeah yeah we'll see what uh what plays out there i think there's a lot a lot at play there um <laughs> there yeah yeah. Yeah. Uh, shout out to, to Commissioner Doug Louie, by the way. I was waiting all evening long to hear the B word, but he went Owen Sound all night long. Didn't hear the <laughs> B word once tonight. So uh, props goes out to the commission. Uh, I was Doug pretty Owen. proud of that because I figured it would slip out at least once. <laughs> Me too. I was waiting. 
Doug always does a, a fabulous job. Uh, uh, you know, he's been involved in this league for quite a while and I've uh, always had a, it's always been a pleasure working with him. And, and I think he does do a lot. And a little shout out to Daryl Smart too, who's uh, the man behind the, uh, the switching here. He's going to be editing and um, hopefully we haven't given you too much editing to have to do Daryl. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Pat, Jake, anything else you want to add about this draft? The one thing I think we, we have talked about, I think five of the teams in this draft, we really haven't talked about Peterborough. We should discuss the Lakers. I mean, they're pretty quiet because they didn't they didn't have a whole bunch of picks, right? You want to you want to say anything about them getting you know Thomas Witty and John Vesna, and that's it. I was I was just gonna say, I was just, just gonna say for bringing up Peterborough. I can't believe. That. <laughs> I was I was fair. actually I was just gonna say actually this is just Paul Day doing Paul Day things, just quietly goes about things, and oh you know just casually picks up Thomas Witty, a guy that has so much experience, um, you know. He's a guy that played in the National Lacrosse League this past year. Um, he's a guy that a lot of people are very high on. And as I mentioned, you know, just you don't really talk about Peter O, but there you go. They pick up one of the best defenders that's available in the draft. And you're like, oh, wait, yeah, they actually did do something. Yeah. Listen, three time back to back to back man cap champions. If Paul Day can find one of his draft picks to step into that powerhouse lineup, that's a home run grand slam, as far as I'm concerned. If he can find a draft pick to step into that Peterborough Laker lineup right away, that is is a grand slam home run for, for coach. And I think that, uh, sorry, Stephen, I was going to say that the thing is, I think we, you know, Thomas Whitty's going to have an opportunity to, to crush sure. this lineup. It's going to be hard uh, just with how loaded they are, um, you know, especially on defense, but he's the guy that, you know, you can trust putting him in the lineup because he has played against grown men. Um, this isn't a guy coming straight out of junior that has, you know, no experience playing at the next level. He's coming out of junior, but he also played in the national lacrosse league. So I think this is a guy that is going to get an opportunity um but like you said jake uh they have the luxury to take their time with their mm -hmm. prospects uh, uh you know and that's a luxury but that's also a testament to what the lakers have done over these past years building a dynasty and one of the things that paul day has done while he's been with this team i think is is the, the lakers have gotten people generally considered a bit old you know, Six Nations comes, wins three out of four man cups. And the Lakers were, you know, they had a lot of veteran great players, but they didn't have the youth and, and dy dynamic drive that some of the other com competitors did, the lead contenders. And he really brought a lot of Peterborough guys in and, and some guys from which I've got a lot of youth and got the team a lot younger. And here, you know, like you said, they won three straight man cups. They're in pretty good shape. But some of these moves, they are getting some picks for down the road when you're going to need to go through that process again of making sure you you keep some youth and keep injecting some some athleticism and and uh, and talent into the program yeah and the new mem center there uh stamper is is the floor redone are they ready to rock and roll in, in peterborough for the for the lakers yeah we were supposed to be ready to go there last year and uh <laughs> i haven't even seen it honestly a couple of, couple of minor trades during the draft i don't know how normal that is for an MSL draft, but only a, a couple of minor deals, later round picks uh, swapped here tonight as well. Yeah, it was pretty quiet. Um, it's I'm not abnormal. It's usually maybe a bit more action. Um, I think, again, you know, not knowing, <laughs> not seeing anybody for a year and a half might have made yeah. it a little bit tougher, but certainly, and, and again, only 30 picks is different. I mean, when you do the WLA draft, you have to, you have to settle in jumbo. You got a lot of picks to deal with there. Um, I've, been on, I've been on that soapbox to kind of shorten that uh, draft up a little bit. I like the five rounds. I think, you know, five, six is the way to go. They do eight. That's a long night for sure. And uh, listen, I thought the draft uh, with commission right on down, Daryl, everybody did a fantastic job here tonight. And, and I know it's not an easy process to pull off and all things considered guys, I think it ran, it ran pretty smoothly here tonight. Pat, last word for you. Isn't it great to actually talk about lacrosse, oh, like real lacrosse stuff? Heart. Good for the heart, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's so amazing. I've been so excited in the days leading up to this and, you know, telling my fiance, like, we get to do some real lacrosse stuff. Not that, I mean, you know, we've been covering stuff. We've all been doing, uh, covering things, and it is, it is you know, interesting stuff, but this is real, and this is you know, it, it is like takes a good for the heart. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks, uh, Doug Louie and Daryl Smart for bringing us all on. Thanks, Jake, for joining in from the West Coast. And Pat Gregoire for uh, 
coming in from much closer. Uh, I am Stephen Stamp, and it's been a real pleasure chatting about lacrosse again. Thanks for being with us, uh, lacrosse fans, and we hope to see you soon.